Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, uh, my name is Safreen, and this and is my I'm, Panos. And I'm Panos. And we work at the Off-Campus Housing and Job Resource Center at Concordia University. And today, we're just going to be giving a little workshop about working through the pandemic. And so um, today's agenda, we're just going to talk about myths versus facts about workers' rights. We're going to talk about job searching and the few resources you can use. We're going to talk about um, returning to work and safety measures. And at the end, you can ask any questions that you have. So um, we're going to give you a little introduction of who we basically are. We are the Housing and Job Resource Center of the, Concord of the Concordia Student Union. So we are a service run by students for students from the Concordia Student Union. We basically give legal information for housing and jobs related questions. Uh, for example, if you have a problem with your apartment or a problem with your employer, we can assist you on how to deal in, uh, with such a situation. We also uh, offer some resources for job hunt or finding a home. And we also have a classified website with screened ads where you can both find some housing ads and job ads if you're interested, whether or, whether or not you're looking for an apartment or a job. Uh, usually we're open Monday to Thursday, 10 to 6, and Friday, 11 to 4. In person, we used to be before the pandemic. Now our, all our services have, uh, tra uh, have transferred to remote services, and we can assist you through our... Um, uh, Hojo email, which you can see on the screen. So um, let's see and let's start with the uh, first part of uh, our workshop, which is called um, Myths versus Facts about uh, COVID-19 and your rights at work. Basically, we're going to ask you a couple of questions based on information that was that is produced by the CNSST, uh, which is a Comité de Santé de Éducation uh, de Travail in Quebec. And you'll have a couple of seconds to uh, comment on the chat, uh, to vote basically well, with a true or false statement, and then we'll show you the answer. Hopefully, there's going to be a participation from you. So if you're ready, I can start with the first question. Sufrin, do you think I can start? I can start? Yeah, I think you're ready. OK. So first uh, statement, an asymptomatic person cannot infect someone else. I'll give you 10 seconds to write on the chat. True or false? What do you think? An asymptomatic person cannot infect someone else. It's a basic question. It's a basic, you know, fact that a lot of people are getting uh, wrong. Even uh, we are a couple of months inside the pandemic. Suffering, do we have anything? So far, no. Oh. I'll give you five more seconds. Okay, we have two false. Okay. So it's false. An infected person, whether symptomatic or not, can actually transmit COVID-19. And... Uh, uh, despite the fact that we are not a health service, it's it's very important that we know that uh, when we move on with the rest of the questions, this is a very important thing. Uh, basically, during the pandemic, you have to act like you are uh, you do have COVID nineteen and protect yourself as much as you would do if you knew you had it, because there's a lot of chance that um, that you might be. Uh, you might be infected without having and so any symptoms. So touching your mouth, nose or eyes after having been in contact with an infected person or um, a contaminated surface is a way of developing COVID-19. So always act like you are uh, infected in the public. So take care and protect yourself. So that was a warm up question, basically. Now we're going to more relevant stuff with our a workshop today, which is the workers' rights. 
during COVID-19. And the next question is, or statement is, if physical distancing is possible at work, protective equipment is not required. And we're always talking about the Quebec uh, regulations and the Canadian regulations. So I'll give you five to 10 seconds again to say true or false. If physical distancing is possible at work, protective equipment is not required. What do you think? One person said true. One person said true. Mm -hmm. So let's see. It's actually false. You know, a mask and a protective uh, eyewear, when in the case uh, stated by the CNSSD, which is like a protective glasses or a visor, should be provided in addition to enforce social distancing. So if distancing is possible, then wearing protective equipment must be must not represent an additional risk for the worker safety. Um, and in the case that social distancing is not possible in the work environment, um, it is acceptable to wear only a mask, only if all workers wear a mask and have no interaction with customers. Also, there is the exemption of the service industry where workers dealing directly with customers require, you know, plexiglass bar between them and the customer or protective eyewear visor and a mask regardless of the customer use of a mask. So basically, um, you always have to wear your mask, even especially when you are uh, serving customers or you are in the serving industry or any other uh, work that you have uh, close interaction with customers or co-workers. Um, so the other fact that we have here, uh, an employer does not have to take any special measures to protect the health of workers. What do you think about that statement? Does an employer have the right, have the uh, responsibility to take any measures to protect the health of the workers or it's only uh, their responsibility, their individual responsibility to do that? Again, we're not asking based on, you know, morals or anything, but based on the the worker standards in Quebec right now and the handout that was produced by the CNESST, which is uh, the Center for the uh, Workers' Rights in Quebec. So one person said, wouldn't they legally be entitled to? Myth, question mm -hmm. mark? Mm -hmm. There is a question mark. So let's see. So we'll say false. So Every employer must take the necessary measures to protect the health and ensure the safety and physical well-being of their worker. And this is not something that we uh, can take, you know, uh, it's something that we really have to make sure it's been enforced in our workplace. Um, there has been very serious, you know, uh, uh, situations where uh, the employer did not meet this uh, uh, criterion and did not encourage that those measures that are mentioned above. Uh, so encouraging uh, hand washing and proper respiratory etiquette were coughing and sneezing into a tissue, regularly cleaning and disinf disinfecting surfaces, adopting a work practice that encourages two meters away, supporting telework, which is very important and it has been promoted in every uh, sector that it's possible, uh, developing a procedure for exclusion from workplace for workers exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms. So um, the workers actually should be informed of the risks and the preventive measures implemented to reduce and control them. The, the employer has to inform the workers about the situation and whether or not this job is, um, the job that they are performing uh, will have any, you know, increased chances of uh, conducting with people who might be infected. A worker must take the necessary measures to ensure his health as well, safety or physical well-being, and see that he does not endanger the health, safety or physical well-being of other persons or near his workplace. So next statement, Oof. okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you still see the slideshow? Yes, you can. 
So, can you all hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. So I guess everybody can. Can you see the PowerPoint as well? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so the next statement, workers have no responsibilities in taking necessary measures to ensure safety in their workplace. Uh, what do you think about that? No answers yet. No answers yet. Let's see. There's two myths. So like, yeah, two false. Okay. And it's true, it's false. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. A worker must take the necessary measures as well to ensure his health, safety, or physical well-being. That was partially answered before as well. And um, see that they do not endanger the health, safety, or physical well-being of other persons at near uh, or near the his workplace. So that was an easy one, I can say. Let's move on to the next one, which is also a little bit more, you know, specific. The CNSST that we've been talking uh, for all this time can shut down a workplace due to COVID-19 related risks. There's a fact. One fact. Mm -hmm. There is one fact. It's moving to the right direction, I'm giving out the answers here. So that's true. Uh, there is a certain procedure that can be followed, uh, but if the inspector deems that the health, safety, or the physical, the physical well-being of a worker is at risk, they may order the closure of the workplace until the employer takes corrective action. And that's very important for everybody to know whether or not they're working uh, from distance or in person. Uh, and specifically for the situations where uh, physical distancing uh, hasn't been respected either by the worker or by co-worker or by the employer, excuse me. Um, there, if there has been a complaint at the senior CST that this, uh, you know, this workplace does not... Uh, respect the standards that are set by the CNSSD and the government of Canada and Quebec, the uh, CNSSD does have the, um, the power to actually shut down a whole you know, unit or a department or even a whole uh, uh, business if they're not respecting those standards. So that's very important for us to keep in mind. Okay. There's another tip that I would like to add. Um, it's very important for everybody to stay tuned to the news, to hear what's new with workers' rights. Don't forget to verify every source you're reading and to always double check uh, every website that you read. Most of the times the, scene, the, the government, uh, the federal websites have very accurate information. It's very easy to read, but also they do, you know, update regularly and especially during the pandemic there's a lot of things that have changed the last couple of months so be aware and always uh stay on the top of your game in order to know your rights so um some other useful facts about uh, worker safety and uh, workers rights during COVID 19 uh, that are very important as well, as, as long as the rest of the fact that we've talked before, uh, is that the employer must disinfect the workplace when an employee reports flu-like symptoms. So, for example, your co-worker says, okay, I had a fever uh, and I'm not coming to work. It's your employer's responsibility to disinfect the whole workplace, not just the station that your co-worker was working, but the whole workplace. Extremely important to remember that. Um, the employer uh, must insist that a worker stay at home if they believe uh, there is a risk of COVID-19. That means that if you're coughing at work or if you have fever or if you said to your employer that you have fever, uh, then it's their responsibility 
to tell you that you have to stay at home. You and then if they tell you to have to stay at home and quarantine for a couple of days or uh, you know uh, get tested, it's your responsibility to do so. And if you don't and you decide to go to work or go outside while you have expressed you have um, had symptoms of COVID-19, then you might be faced with very uh, um, uh, you know important charges. So we really have to take that serious and do quarantine whatever uh, whenever we have some symptoms of COVID-19. Um, another interesting point is that you have the right to be of work without pay due to illness or accident. So this was uh, a right that uh, workers have fought for and we do, we can, you know, be absent from work. Either if we do have enough uh, work, enough hours, we could, you could get uh, uh, sickness benefits for employment insurance. If you don't, you can just get unpaid leaves, uh, sick leaves or uh, basically the, the condition is that if you have three months of uninterrupted service, you can receive up to two paid days of leaves a year. Um, finally, some more useful facts about worker safety because it's very important to have uh, this information on your mind. I know it might be a little bit tiring, but it's very important. Uh, it's important that your employer cannot force you to take your annual vacation unless they give you at least four weeks notice. So for example, uh, you express uh, some symptoms, you have to quarantine and your pro employer says, okay, you're not at work, you have to take this vacation, you know, the 4% that we mostly call in Montreal and Quebec. That's not legal. If they haven't given you a notice of at least four weeks, important to remember. And finally, Employees will also have the right to be reimbursed if at the employer's request, they must acquire work tools that they did not already own before that they were assigned to telework, like internet connection, phone plan, and etc. So if you have to work from home, if you are, if you have to perform, to perform remote work and uh, some, um, you know, some materials are required, like, uh, a better internet connection, you know, a microphone, a head, a headset, uh, and these are stuff that you didn't have before, but are necessary in order to perform your work. It is at your empl uh, if your employer requests you to get those things, it's their responsibility to uh, actually reimburse you for those things. And this is very important because uh, at the moment, a lot of work, a lot of work has gone online, has gone remote. And uh, a lot of workers do face those conditions at the moment. Okay, so I will be taking over the second part of the presentation. Um, and we're just going to be talking about looking for a job and a few helpful resources that we can talk about. Um, so first things first, looking for work, we, have the classifieds website so classifieds.csu.qc.ca and that is the website that the csu offers to students who are trying to find a job so that's always a good place to look um this would be mostly part-time jobs summer jobs um things to help you out while you're still in school so it's never really anything um specific to your degree or what you're studying but it is still a useful website then obviously there's jobs on Facebook, PJG, Indeed, Craigslist, um, employment news, newsletters. And a tip that we like to give out is to be persistent and send out at least five applications a day. So a few applications a day um, on any job you find to increase your odds of finding one. Uh, and then we're going to talk about remote work so if you're looking for work during a pandemic, it's going to look a little different since a lot of people are working from home. And that's really what we talk about, what we mean when we say remote work. Um, it just means that you don't work in an office and generally you're doing something online. So you can work from anywhere, I guess. And some places to look for remote work are um, gig sites like Upwork and Fever, tutor sites like VipKid or any resource list on the website that we provided. Um, be clear on what equipment equipment is required of you if you have to work from home. 
So what's required from you, what's going to be provided by the workplace? Um, what are your hours of work? Are you going to be permanently remote or is it just a temporary thing? And be very clear on your compensation if you're paid by hour or by the task being performed. That's very, very important. Uh, what do you need for a job application? Obviously you need a cover letter, a CV. A CV or a resume would be a resume of the things that you've done or like your skills and the things that you're good at, your past jobs, past internships, things like that. A cover letter would be a short letter that you write to the company pretty much explaining why you are good for the position you're applying for. And a good attitude, which can be hard during the pandemic, but I guess necessary for job search. Um, you can always go to Career and Planning Services at Concordia University or the Student Success Center. They help out with cover letters, they help out with um, resumes, they've helped me out in the, in the past. And the career planning services can sometimes give you a list of companies that might be hiring depending on your area of study. So they're pretty good resources to go if you want to clean up or if you need a second set of eyes on your CV and or cover letter. Um, and jobs related to new work realities. So Quebec government has temporarily added new jobs in the health in health um, and it's through je contribue covid19.gouv.qc.ca um, and the job options during the pandemic from the federal job bank so consider working in the agri-food field in essential services or in different fields by going on this website that's provided and seeing what's available now so, uh, due to the pandemic scams have increased i'm sure we've all noticed them everybody's always calling you from a random number we know um but job scams have also increased so uh, one ways to be aware of scams are a jobs that request your social insurance information before you've been hired um two jobs that offer to deposit money into your account before you've worked any hours or for the purpose of bitcoins are similar um there's a lot of jobs right now that we found out are pretty much offering to give you money that you can convert into something else it's a scam no one pays you for work you haven't done so that's already a red flag um if you see something like that and any offers that look too good to be true a position you don't have experience for a way more than average salary like jobs with big big salaries be very wary and any job um, information that's loaded with typos and strange capitalization or strange sentences that you don't understand is probably also a scam, so be aware of that. Um, but I would say just be aware of jobs that ask for a lot of unnecessary information or jobs that hire you and seem very forceful for you to start working would be a red flag as well. Okay, we have a question panels. Okay. So what are our favorite websites to look for jobs besides Indeed? Perhaps one with higher rate of success. Can you think of any? Um, to be honest, finding job online, it was always challenging and it still is. But right now, it's probably the only option we have. Uh, yeah. We cannot really suggest, you know, a, a certain platform. Uh, we did have some before. Uh, which was the one is beginning here. But um, yeah, I don't have any specific websites. Yeah, me neither. I, job searching is honestly a whole job on its own. <laughs> so you probably have to visit multiple websites. Uh, LinkedIn is also helpful to make connections and ask other people who've worked in your field before if they are working in a company that's hiring and stuff like that. But we don't know about any website that guarantees you a job. You know, a good resource, it's always uh, our website, the Classifieds website. Um, if there are available on-campus jobs, most probably they will post it in our website, the hojo.classifieds. Uh, also, we are in the process uh, of renewing and rebuilding our website, so be patient with its current form. But um, um, it's definitely a good option to, if you are a Concordia student, you can create your account on our Classifieds website, send your student ID, and um, uh, we can actually, you know, uh, you can have access to some jobs offered specifically to students. Okay, so our next slide is about being an employee or self-employed. During the pandemic, the definitions can become very, very confusing, but it's very important to, you, uh, to know what exactly you are. Are you an employee or are you working for yourself? 
sort of thing. So you're considered self-employed if you are not subordinated to your client. So you decide your work schedule, how and where you complete the work. Um, you can make profits, but you can also have losses. So you must cover all your business operating costs. You own the tools you need for working and you've paid for them. You can offer your services to more than one client and those services are not part of uh, business usual activity. Um, you decide the methods you use to achieve specific tasks and your relationship with the clients and at the achievement of the results. And if you have to double check that you're getting paid minimum wage. So being self-employed is pretty much sort of operating your own business. Um, it's very important not to confuse the two because whether you're an employee or you're self-employed, your rights differ um, greatly. So it's important to know what exactly you are. Um, during the interview, questions you can ask your employer are, is the position remote or is it in person? Very important questions to ask during COVID. And you can also ask if, because I know a few jobs do a few days at home, a few days at the office. So ask if that's going to be your situation. You just want to ask, ask exactly what you'll be doing so you can prepare yourself accordingly. Um, you can also ask what COVID-19 precautions are being taken in the workplace. Like what have they implemented to ensure worker safety? You can ask if the nature of the position will be changing over the course of the next few months because everything is changing, <laughs> let's be real. And um, you can ask where the office, the office is located or where the company is located, especially if you have to work from home, just so you know, um, in case you have to send any letters. Okay, interview etiquette. So interviews in person, make sure you maintain social distancing, of course, masks should be worn throughout and you wanna sanitize your hands um, to make sure you're safe and other people around you are safe. And then if you're doing an interview on Zoom or Google or any other video chatting platform, you need to find yourself a quiet place where you know you won't be disturbed. Make sure you have the right equipment. So a laptop, headphones, headsets, probably internet and uh, pretest the app you're going to use. So make sure you set it up correctly to see exactly what you're going to look like, if your audio is good and stuff like that. That's how most interviews, I guess, are being conducted nowadays. So the next slide about returning to work. Where am I? OK, so can you return to work? It should be clear that everybody is a risk, at risk of getting COVID-19 if they're exposed to the virus. However, some people are more likely than others to become severely ill because they are considered higher risk individuals, of course. If you've been asked to return to work, you cannot refuse to return. So you have to return to work unless you have a valid reason, such as an illness, to which you would have to provide proof. And or if your employer has not made the appropriate safety precautions. So when you're being asked to return to work, the workplace still has to be safe. So social dis uh, social distancing has to be maintained. Masks must be worn when social distancing cannot be maintained, um, et cetera, depending on what exactly your job is. But generally, if you're being asked to return to work, you cannot refuse unless you have a valid reason, um, such as an illness or um, the employer is not maintaining worker safety. You can always contact us if this happens, by the way. Um, mm -hmm, safety measures. So being in an enclosed space for a long time can increase the risk of getting COVID or being in a crowd, um, the duration of which you interact with someone. Or we also know that COVID is spread through um, particles that come out of someone's mouth or nose when they're speaking. So make sure to stay away, <laughs> six feet away um, from people. That's it. Okay, then remember when going to and from work, stay home if you feel sick, wear a mask in public or in proximity of other people, maintain social distancing wherever possible and sanitize your hands and belongings. So this also comes into play if you're going to be taking public transit, make sure at times when you can't socially distance because there are times like that, um, just make sure you're wearing a mask and wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. <laughs> Um, so what does going to work look like in the context of COVID? Hmm.
like I mentioned before, public transportation. Before you leave your house and when you reach your destination, wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if soap is not an option. I think we say this to say that the best option is always to wash your hands, but whenever that's not available, please sanitize whenever possible. Always wear a mask. I think that's been made mandatory for public transit in Montreal. Um, try to leave some distance between you and your fellow riders. Do not touch your eyes, nose, and mouth, and sneeze and cough inside your elbow and sanitize right afterwards. Hmm. Wow. In the workplace, avoid sharing or disinfect, or disinfect shared objects and equipment. Sanitize frequently touch surfaces and objects such as workstations, keyboards, phones, handrails, doorknobs. Self-monitor your symptoms and stay alert if any symptoms appear and inform your employer of any symptoms um, that you see. We have a little graphic here and it's just something to say that these two are very close. If you, you can perform the arm test by having both participants extend their arms. If your arms touch in the middle, you need more distance. It's understandable that distance is not always possible in certain workplaces, but we encourage you to do your best you can, the best you can to stay as safe as possible. Um, yeah. When you come home, wash your hands, um, sanitize your mask, your phone, especially your phone, keys and wallet, wash your clothes, take care of yourself, um, which means eat well, sleep well, um, essential, it's essential in managing stress, especially during school time, Corona is just ugh, not the best, especially during exams. So just make sure you take care of yourself, um, I guess, to maintain a strong immune system. And so, that's yes, it. This was the presentation of, for our workshop. Uh, we will stay around for a little while for questions. If you have, you can always type in the chat. Mm -hmm. And uh, my colleague Safrin is going to transfer to me because I have no access to the chat. But... Uh, <laughs> We do have a question. Uh, we have a question? Yeah. So does career and planning services help with LinkedIn profiles for job hunting? Hmm. Do you want to answer this question, Supreme? Or I, I, not, I not that I know of, but I've never asked them directly. I know that previously when I've used CAPS, they've just helped me go through my CV and cover letter, like really line by line. They give you a few pointers on what to do during the interview. They might give you a list of a few companies that are hiring. Um, as in, does they do they help with LinkedIn? I'm not sure. You would have to send them an email. Mm. And ask if they uh, do that specifically. Probably they can give some useful tips about LinkedIn as well. We, yeah. Because today, especially during the pandemic, LinkedIn has, like, it was already a big thing. It has become a bigger thing now. And they definitely know a lot of things. If they know how to, you know, um, improve your CV, they definitely know how to improve your LinkedIn profile, which is a portion of your CV. So career planning services have been very useful, um, especially for students who are close to graduate or have graduated already and are looking for specific jobs related to their careers. So they do help a lot. They do offer their service remotely. So do contact them, send them an email if you have a specific question or you want resources for a specific job or career. Yeah. I hope he's answered this question. I hope so. Do we have any more questions? So far, no. But I do want to reiterate on the job scams again. Um, please be aware of anything that you find suspicious. You can always send us an email at hojo at csu.qc.ca. Right. Yes, that's it. You can always send us an email if you're unsure of anything, and we can look through the job offer and see if it seems legit. But uh, just be very wary of scams. And the main thing is that uh, we've seen in the past a lot of students when we used to be in her office and people were coming there. Uh, we saw a lot of students coming in with, you know, some job offers for someone who has just graduated, graduated from, you know, JMSB or just started their, their you know, academic career. Um, and they offered a position of, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for something that you yourself know that you're uh, not qualified for such a position. This is definitely a scam. And uh, a lot of people do not realize that right away. 
and do give out personal information, do give out, uh, you know, sometimes they ask you to um, exchange uh, some, uh, you know, we've seen like Apple Apple Store uh, gift cards to be given out as, uh, as an exchange. So, you know, every time you see something very suspicious, uh, you should not, uh, at the beginning, you should not sign anything. You should not give any information. You should ask someone who is around. You should also contact us and ask us whether or not it's a, excuse me, like a scam. Do we have anything else? Um, does Hojo help with job interviews normally? So um, we give throughout the year similar work workshops. This was mostly, uh, you know, uh, related about working rights. Uh, but if I think the career and planning services will give you also some tips about that. Um, we did give some attempts, tips today. Always be, you know, infant person. Try to be uh, dressed formally, not too much, but uh, dress well, uh, try to be on time. This is very important. Um, stay in contact with uh, the person that you are actually, uh, you have been interviewed by uh, and do not pressure too much for an answer. Eventually, if they really want you, they will contact you. Um, yes, if you have some a more specific question, we will be glad to answer it by email. Yeah. I think that's it for the questions. Okay. Um, so before we close, uh, we just wanted to say thank you and also give you a couple of minutes if you want to, if you have any extra questions. Um, and keep in mind that we are a service from the students for the students. We are a service of the student union. Um, and if you feel unsafe in your employment or housing uh, situation anytime, feel free to contact us. Uh, and reach out to us. We are available to help you and navigate you uh, with any labor or housing issue. There might be situations that you don't know how to work, uh, how to deal with them. Uh, there, you might have to initiate a, a specific procedure or contact something like the senior SST or the Regido Lasman. We are here to help you out with that. So don't hesitate to contact us at our email at the moment or by phone um at 514-848-7474 and extension 7935 give a you can always leave a voice message but i think the best way to contact us at the moment is by email safrin do you have anything to add not that i can think of okay so uh since i guess we don't have any more questions um our workshop for today is done. Thank you very much for participating. Uh, the link, the video is gonna stay on uh, the channel of the Concordia Student Union online. Hopefully there is some useful information for you that you weren't today with us and uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Bye guys. Bye.